First off, I'd like to say a very special thanks to Dave Cross for putting on the Photoshop Virtual Summit. And I'm excited to get a chance to share with you some time-saving tips inside of Photoshop. My name is Rich Harrington. I'm the publisher of PhotoFocus. And what we're going to cover here are things that are just going to help you get things done more quickly. Let's go ahead and get things underway. We're going to start things off with actions. I'm going to open up this image here. And we'll take it right into Photoshop. And just open it up with the default. Now, your Actions panel is going to be visible under the Windows menu, and you'll just choose Actions. I suggest you make it a little bit larger, and depending upon what you've done with it, there may be some actions loaded. What you could do is click here and load some of these sample ones. For example, let's try this one here for image effects, just to get familiar with the concept. You'll see here a wide range, and what an action is, is a series of steps that get played back. Now, if you select an action, you can simply press play, and it's going to walk through and play back those series of steps. Now, depending upon what you did here, it may not work necessarily, because notice here, it wasn't happy with fade since we had a smart object. But I can click continue, and it gets it close with the aged look, and that left the new one above the original. Now, let's throw that away, and this time we're going to rasterize this layer, getting rid of the smart object. And let's try again. And you see, we don't get the error that time, and it was able to blend the effect, giving us that aged look, comparing the before and after. So a little bit of defocusing and a little bit of yellowing of the image. Now, this action was cool in that it made another layer by taking the snapshot. If you look at some of these options here for image effects, you'll just see a wide range. For example, let's try the soft edge glow. And you see that was very gentle and just brought about a little bit of glow at the sides. You could repeat that or modify the action. One thing to realize is if you open up the actions here, you can see the steps. So here's the Gaussian blur. If I click next to that, that's going to bring up the dialog box for that step. That works nicely so we can actually change it. So it's going to make the Gaussian blur, and then it's going to change the blending mode. So I want to interact with those two steps. Let's try again. I'll press play, and now it stops at that stage of the action, allowing me to blur it a little bit more for a healthier glow. And I'll go with something a little bit stronger like that. There we go. Click OK. And now it gets to the next layer here, where it's going to make a new layer. And I could change the mode of that layer, getting different results. And you see there how it behaved differently by going to overlay. Of course, we can step through and audition as well, because we do have that flexibility here, which is nice. I like soft light. So what you notice there is that an action wasn't necessarily locked in stone. You do get the ability to modify. OK, let's go on here and talk about batch processing for a moment. The whole idea of batch processing is that you want to take an action and apply it to multiple images. This is kind of like baking cookies. It's not that efficient to bake just one, but you can get a whole bunch going at once. So the way that this works is you take an action and you're going to apply it to a group of images. Usually it works best if they're in one folder, but you don't have to do it this way. The action that you want to use should also be loaded in the Actions panel if you're going to use it. Then you just choose File, Automate, Batch. Choose the desired set in action, and then let it roll. You'll need to also tell it where it's going to put the results. So is it going to override anything? Does it include all the subfolders? Is there warnings? So this is how they open. And then once it's processed, where does it go? Does it leave the files open, or does it close them and save them and put them in the original location? So easy enough. So let's go back here to Bridge. And I'm going to make a batch process for a second. Here we go. And you see that I've got a stylized approach here. Well, I want to age these a little bit more, just to really lean into that aged look you were just seeing. So I'll go back to Photoshop, close the images that I'm currently working with, and start clean. File, Automate, Batch. Now what you need to do is tell it what's going to happen. So choose the set, 
and choose the action that you want to use. I'm going to go with that soft edge glow. Then tell it where it's going to come from. So you can just choose the folder. There we go. And I'll just select the batch folder there. And now you can tell it what to happen. So if you want to include any nested subfolders, if there's any color profiles like some CMYK images, some RGB, this will handle that. And then tell it where it's going to go. So do you want to overwrite the files or do you want to make a new folder? In this case, I want to make a new folder and put it here next to it. So we'll call this one for results. And I'll create it and choose. Now you can also decide what happens. So for example, maybe I want to take the document name plus add processed as some text. There we go. Set that to none. Put an underscore at the front and then add the extension. And you can see how it's taking on the new name. That works well. And let's click OK. Now, because we had the batch set up with the dialogs popping up, you see it interrupts. This is fine if you want to modify things. What I'm going to do, though, is click Cancel here for a second and stop the action. Instead of this, let's turn off these dialogs. We could turn them off globally there by clicking right on that box to enable or disable. And what I'm going to do is just select the Gaussian blur, double click and put it a little higher. There we go. Now it's all set. Let's close this and run it again. File, automate, batch. Everything's set up the same. Click OK. And what you're going to see is it goes through pretty quickly and targets where we're going to put it. Now it's asking about saving the file. So in this case, I have to save each one because it was a layered file. That's fine, but this might seem a little tedious. As you see there, it allows you to go through and process those images quickly. Now let's cancel here for a second. And later on, if you want to really not have to be interrupted with this step, you're actually going to learn about the image processor script. So hold this batch command for later. And when we revisit it, you'll see a slightly better way than this older batch command. Now batch works great if you want to make Photoshop files or you're looking to save source files, but there are other ways to use a similar batch operation. What about recording your own custom action? Well, that's possible too. What you're going to need to do is make a new set to hold it and then we'll load the content. Now on the screen, I've given you a couple of shortcuts that are really important to know. This is because actions are very literal. So if you click on a layer, it's going to actually memorize the name of that layer. That can be problematic because you might get results that you don't want, or it might look for something that you don't have in the Photoshop file. So not all actions are bulletproof, but by using these keyboard shortcuts, you could do things like select different layers or move layers around. Okay, let's go ahead and try this out and let's make our own custom action. There we go. Open up these two images. And we're going to come up with a sketch design. So to do this, you're going to need to make a set. Now I've already got one here, but I'll make a fresh one and I'll just name it RH actions. A set holds your actions, then create a new empty action. And if you want, give it a name or you can name it later. There we go. Now it's recording everything I do. So I'm going to do a few things. First up, I'm going to duplicate this layer. Command J. Then rename it. And you see it's been recording those steps. Make a layer, rename it style. Let's go ahead and convert for smart filters. This makes it non-destructive. Let's go ahead and apply some sketch filters here. And we'll change its blending mode. Nice. Double click on the blend 
and mix that in a little bit. There we go. Let's add a new pattern layer. And I'll load a pattern that I've got stored in my Photoshop patterns. And blend it in a little bit. Notice that you can easily experiment. So if it's not quite right, you can either keep going or stop the action record here and get rid of the step you don't need. All right, that seems to work pretty well. Let's go ahead and try it on another image now. I'm gonna select my sketch action and press play. It now plays back and I see all of the steps go through. Let's take a look at that using the history. And we'll make another snapshot. Where we started, where we ended up. Definitely a consistent look here, just giving a little bit more of a stylized grunge look that I did there with the sketch. I like that, it worked out nicely. As you see, we are able to get consistent results by recording our own custom action. Now, if you come up with actions that you want, they're not actually stored until you select the set and tell it to save. If you don't actually save the sets here, what's gonna happen is they're just stored in short-term memory. So if you have a crash or a reset, you could lose your work. So I recommend storing the actions. Actions are really quite versatile. There's all sorts of amazing things you could do with it. Let's go ahead and just reset this here. And I'll clear that out. And here's another one that I made for a high contrast look. You see that I like it. And what it did there was a couple of combinations. Basically, it made a black and white version and a couple of adjustment layers and came up with a stylized approach. One of the cool things about actions is you can actually look at the recipe and learn how it was made. Plus there's an abundance of websites where you can go and get more of these. Another thing you could do is actually map actions to keyboard shortcuts. So if you just bring up the actions panel, you'll note that any of your favorite actions can be remapped. Just double click on the action and you can now assign it to one of the function keys that are available. Now your keyboard may not have 19 function keys, but some do. When you choose one of these, you can also add a modifier key like shift or command. Obviously it'll vary on a Windows computer and assign a color coding label to help it stand out a little bit here. So it's a little bit easier to see. This will help you really discover things in the bar. So you can use that and now it says F5. This way, if I have another image selected, I just press F5 and it's gonna run. This is going to make it a lot easier to keep track of your actions and to really speed up some things that you need to do on a day-to-day -day basis. If you'd like to continue the learning, I offer a couple different ways to do that. Remember, PhotoFocus has daily content that's going to give you news, information, tutorials, and tips, not just from me, but more than 20 other great photographers. And you can check out ThinkTap Learn. This is another online platform where I offer courses that will help you out.